My name is Tim Dorn. I'm a postdoc in the biomechanics lab um, at Stanford, working under Professor Scott Delp. So my work is concerned with predicting how people move, um, specifically how people walk and run. Um, in traditional ways, uh, people look at that information is by capturing data in a, in a lab. And they get people into a lab and they record how people move, their reaction forces on the ground, and that's how we get an idea of um, investigating muscle function in human walking and running. Um, but the problem is that we can't uh, change the model and we can't uh, prescribe certain interventions. We can simulate surgeries by extending tendons and changing around the, the body parts and the muscles. Um, or we can test assistive devices on the model and predict how people will move with that assistive device without having to build that device and attach it to a person in the lab. So we're using a, a free open source software called OpenSim, which is a framework for performing uh, musculoskeletal simulations. And a musculoskeletal simulation is uh, taking a model of the human body, so the bones and the joints, and that model is actuated by uh, muscle tendon units. So that's a muscle in series with a tendon, just like how we have muscles in our body, our mathematical model also has muscles. And we create this model in OpenSim, which essentially means that the model is subject to all the laws of physics and gravity. The model will only know how to walk if we provide some feedback on its environment and what the muscles are doing, just like how we walk in real life. So each of the muscles in the model uh, has a feedback controller. Different types of feedback controllers are associated with different muscles. And given the right parameters for those controllers, the model can move in many, many different ways. And the problem becomes to find the set of parameters which makes the model walk in the most optimal way, or in other words, to make the model walk how a human will. By that I mean we take things into account like no falling, um, and we really want to minimize the metabolic cost of walking, which is essentially the amount of energy that our muscles use to move. The first thing we did was create simulation of normal walking. And that's because there are plenty, there's plenty of data out there about how people walk normally. And the way we, we validated our predictions is we took that data that's out there, um, and we're talking about kinematics, so motion, uh, we're talking about grand reaction forces, that's the force that, that your feet exert on the ground. And that data is recorded and is out in the literature. And we can also take uh, EMG data, which represents the electrical activity that's being delivered to each muscle. And we can correlate all of these and, and compare these data to what the model predicts. In the normal walking simulation, as you can see, uh, the, the model predicts a motion, a walking motion, that's very similar to how people walk uh, in, in reality just by looking at this video. Um, we can also compare quantitatively the individual joint kinematics, so the, the movement of the hip, knee and ankle in this motion, and we can compare that data to data that's been experimentally recorded in a lab. And as you can see from this plot, the kinematics that the model predicts uh, is within the range of normal human walking that's measured experimentally. So this gives us great confidence about the predictions, about the suitability and, and robustness of this model. So once we have normal walking, we can test predictions on inclined walking and loaded walking. Further than that, we can delve right into the models and we can access information like what is each individual muscle doing and how much force is each individual muscle generating. And that's information that we can't get experimentally.